Good, uh, Good afternoon, Chief Justice. Are you well, ma'am? I'm well, thank you for asking. Are you relaxed? Yes, I am. Or should I help you to be relaxed a bit? Okay, all right. Uh, where, where is home? Where were you born and bred? I was born and bred in Springs, Guatemala. Okay. And I studied there. No attachment to any village? Well, other than just through marriage, but I'm a township girl. Okay. I studied there in a local school. Yes. And I matriculated there. Okay. And I yeah, went to the University of Zululand. Zululand. When was that? It, uh, 1990. 1990. And I finished in 1994. And what degree did you do there? I studied PURIS and LLP yes. in Zululand. And thereafter? And thereafter, I went on an international visitor program to Australia. Yes. And, uh, Where in Australia? In, um, in, in Melbourne, and for a year. But fortunately, I if you could speak up a bit, or maybe, yes. Yes, I started in Melbourne. Yes. Uh, I mean, that, that was the program. And then after I came back, uh, and my first job was the job at the CCMA. Yes. And fresh from varsity, mm -hmm. I had no experience at all. But through training, I think I made an account in my application that through training, uh, that's where I was assisted to be where I am today because I was one of the first commissioners that were appointed uh, at the wake of the new Labor Relations Act. Yes. And so I was with the CCMA until uh, 2000, and then I left the CCMA to consult. I was specializing in training, uh, labor law training, and in 2003 I decided I cannot study law and not, and not practice law. So yes. I did my pupillage, where? Uh, and my pupillage, was, I did it in uh, Johannesburg Bar, and my pupil master was Albert Moy, and part of Group 21, and I'm yes. still part of that group to date. Yes. Yes. And um, so you have been an advocate for many, for how many years now? Al almost, um, was it 14? Do you get... Uh, support from uh, firms of attorneys, en enough support, or are you barely surviving? Yeah, I think for an African woman, we barely survive. Mm. Um, but we do get one or two attorneys that will sustain you, and then and the state attorney would give you Is the state attorney forthcoming now? The state attorney is forthcoming, so I do get uh, good work and good briefs from the state attorney. I'm pleased to hear that, uh, yes. Other than Long that, it's last. just, you know, the story of survival. Yes. And, and, and we normally say that when you compare the practice of your fellow colleagues who are white and yes. yours, yours becomes like you started yesterday because, yes. you know, you have to yes. go an extra mile to, to make it. What kind of work uh, does the state attorney give you? Um, they give me labor, but um, uh, recently I'm getting, I think, a lot of uh, constitutional matters as yes. well. Yes. And so we Have you really been to appear before us I with, did. with some of them? I did, but not recently. I think I, I did an account. Yes, I did appear even uh, on my own. I was doing an NPA matter. It was an uh, interpretation of uh, Sexual Offenses Act oh, yes. and whether it was... Uh, it abolished uh, rape at that time, and so I, I appeared before the Constitutional Court to move yeah. that matter. Yes, and um, for how long have you acted in the Labor Court? If you put all the um, short terms uh, during which you over which you acted, all in all, uh, for how long have you acted there? Um, I think I gave an account on my application. Yes, no, 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 just uh, estimate. Yes, because I started with the pro bono projects yes. that we did. So it could be five years, uh, five years or so. And if then, you put together those uh, if I put periods together, of yes, acting. Because I also acted for a term, full terms, twice. Yes. Yeah, so so that's, that's the... 
Are you now settled whenever you go there to act as a judge or are there still challenges? Well, uh, I think I'm settled, but I think the greatest challenge, because it's not something you do often, is to, you know, issue those judgments. I yes. think sometimes experience delay simply because if you've reserved them and you go back to the challenges of practice, then it gets yes. very tricky. You don't and find time to attend to the judgments. And, and you do try, because yes. I think if you've acted for a term, obviously you have a, a practice to resuscitate. Yes. And, and that you know, puts pressure in terms of prioritization of, of, of your work. But yes. I do try as much as I can to issue those, those, those reserves. And obviously with an understanding that we have to do it expeditiously. That is the call in terms of the Labor Relations Act. Yes, so yes. We, we, it's not that you're sitting and not caring. You do try to find time to, to, to do that. What is the longest you have uh, kept a judgment reserved for, which sort of uh, embarrassed you? Mm, I think embarrassment was more than seven months. That was a big embarrassment. Yes. However, I'm, I'm happy because they, it was a critical issue as well, that one, uh, dealing with issues of discrimination. And you'd want to apply your mind yes. and within the constraints of time that sure. you have. Yes. Uh, however, I acknowledge that that, that that is an issue. But I think if you get appointed and you're full time and you give your attention to the, the writing of judgments, yes. and I suppose with support from senior judges, you learn to curtail your judgment because I know my judgments are sometimes very long yeah. because you research. I think you bring your practice experience because you're trying to convince the judges and I think that would permeate in terms of how you write, you know. So, but I'm thinking with practice you can write simple judgments and it will take less time to, to do that. But on average, how long does it take you to produce a, a, a judgment? Well, um, depending. If it's, it's motion, it's easy to push them. The trials, because you have to go through evidence, and it, it, it can take a day, or, I mean, two days or three, just to go through the evidence and then, you know, crystallize the law yes. and, then, and then produce a judgment. However, I'm saying if you focus, I think it, should, it could be curtailed, and you find some ways of dealing with your, yeah. your challenges once you... You, you permanent. But generally, how long does it take you to produce a judgment? General, uh, on average. There, there are simple ones that you can produce them over a day or two, others three days, but there are others that, you know, you have volumes and volumes of, of evidence that you have to go through it. So that's what I'm saying. It depends on the matter and the, the facts that you have to traverse yes. to... to, to, to um, yes. Come up with Acting Judge President Leleti, over to you, sir. Thank you, Chief Justice, and good day, Ms. Good, good day. Yes. Most of the issues have been covered by the Chief Justice, but just on the issue of your acting stint, uh, in 2014, according to my record, for the period 6 October to the 14th December, yes. you did uh, four weeks of motion court. Yes and four weeks of trial, yes. and we abused you a bit. You did two weeks of agent court. Yes. And then in 2015, five, from the 5th of October to the 11th of December, one week of motion court, six weeks of trial, and then two weeks of agent court. Yes. Yes. Now, out of being selfish i see that you making yourself available for two two courts the yeah. labor court and the electoral court well, what is the situation well as as i was coming here i think i had to resolve that one and i think i looked at my application and my experience points to the labor court and and most probably for me that would be the the, the best court to be considered for, and that, that is my take, is on sitting. Yes, I don't want to, 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 to belabor the point, least I, uh, I spoil it. The, the, the environment at the labor court, how did you find it? Collegiality, how do you relay with colleagues and how they relate to you? It's, it's, it's very collegial, and uh, there is, um, you know, good support there, 
in terms of assistants and uh, senior colleagues, and so you don't feel isolated in, in that court. Can you think of anything that you perhaps uh, would want us to address that can come to mind? I, I don't know, most probably not for, for acting judges, maybe it's just that induction of some sort where you get told what to expect because I think my first time when I acted, it was really scary and I would wish that somebody could have inducted me. Most probably because I'm a process person, I would want to be introduced to process, you know, because if I am not, I get lost. Mm. So it reminded me of my first experience when I was doing pupillage. Uh, the first lecture that I attended, it was um, on criminal law, and the lecturer came, and who is a senior colleague, and taught us uh, about cross-examination, first lecture. And that made me really suspect of my decision to even go to the bar, because it didn't link to the whole litigation, I mean, even in an, if it's an action. However, we're lucky that here because then that program was suspended, there was a proper induction and the Bar Council invited Chris Manovic, who was in New Zealand then, to come and train us. And I know there were a lot of senior colleagues who were part of that induction. And I, for me, it consolidated you know, my decision to, to join the Bar. So I'm referring to, to that because it, it, it could help. Point taken. Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, Mr. Nchalinjali? No question. Thank you. Um, be, be, before you go, oh, is your hand up, uh, Commissioner Nyambi? Please go ahead. Thank you, CJ. Uh, morning, uh, Advocate Nkuta Kodwana. Good morning, Commissioner. It's one question from my side. It's linked to the last question from the JP. It's in relation to anything specific that you have identified in the Labor Court as a challenge. Should you be appointed that you can first deal with? Other than what I've just said. The process I, I, issue. I, I, yes. I think for me it's the issue of uh, individual unrepresented parties that appear there. You know, um, most of them, the issues of language will, will crop up, and just the issues of dealing with them, assisting them. I think that court does try, but I think we can do more. Um, and in terms of just trying to be inquisitorial, because you have a, a party that is not represented, and maybe also to seek assistance from counsel, if there's counsel. In actual fact, in most cases where I'm in court, and even if it's not my matter, there is a person who's appearing and is lost, I volunteer to assist. And most probably we can inculcate that culture because it does help. The matter would stand down, you'll go outside, you'll consult with that party, you'll come back and assist the court. I think it's all about assisting the court and, and making sure that justice is accessible to everyone. Once they're in court, I think is incumbent upon even counsel to assist the court. In any event, it is their duty to, to assist the court. So I think most probably that's what I can add. Thank you, CJ. Thank you very much, Commissioner Nyambi, Acting Judge President. Just one aspect uh, emanating from the question from the fellow commissioner. Um, you are aware, Ms. Nkuta, that we do have a pro bono office based in Johannesburg yes. to assist all those unrepresented and indigent uh, yes. parties. Thank you. Yes. I, I, I do understand that, uh, DJP, but the problem is once they appear before you, if you refer them to pro bono office, sometimes it's closed, it's got time issues. So, and when you can just simply assist if you are cancelled before court, or if the court can. What I'm saying is, over and above that, you still find people who said, we went to the proponent, we were told this, or we're not told that. So you, you, you want to at least make sure that, if possible, you know, without any delay, it can be resolved there. I think in most matters where I intervened, matters were settled, you know. If they were not settled, at least the, the applicant or that unrepresented a party would know exactly what they need to do you know, subsequently. So what I'm saying is, I think it's a service that over and above the propono offers that, you know, would, would be of help to, to court. Commissioner Malema. 
is very brief, uh, Chief Justice. Since you are well experienced with the labor court issues, uh, do you think it is still necessary for you to proceed to interview on an uh, electoral court? <laughs> um, I, I, I seriously had to think about it. And I, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> because if you look at my CV, I'll just be coming here to say, well, clean page, write whatever you want to write. So I don't think it would be fair to, 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 to the commission. So I don't think I should. Uh, Minister. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioner. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm reading the report from the bar. And then maybe I think it's an omission. I don't see any portion what says you have got delayed judgment or reserve judgment. Is well, it omission or is it just that no, you don't have? Well, I think I've decided to volunteer that. Most probably it's because they never picked that one up. But I think, I mean, I, I have to be truthful when I appear before you. And, and I think that's, that's part of my training, that you also address the judge on your limitations. You know, I think that's basically what I did here even if it's not there, but it's the reality of things. Because, I mean, these proceedings are public. People may know, they may have been parties, and they would have wanted to hear me on this particular aspect. So you have outstanding reserve judgments? Not, not, not currently. No, I've, I've issued all of my judgments. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes. Well, <clears throat> Ms. Nguta, uh, Gondon, uh, on the assumption that uh, you're still a candidate for the electoral court, from a pra pragmatic perspective, I was going to propose this, if you don't mind, that colleagues from, from the Labor Court, Acting Judge President Laletzi and Mr. Njalin Chalets, and subject to the views of my colleagues here, I was going to suggest that they just step aside uh, President, uh, Judge President Shongwe sits. Because you are a candidate on both, we interview you rather than go and come back. But that will depend entirely on my fellow commissioners. And the other two could also come. We finish them, and then we will deliberate. Oh, I don't know if she has withdrawn. She's, she was expressing a wonder. Have you withdrawn, ma'am? Yeah, uh, no, 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 let's clear it up. Have you withdrawn? Because I didn't, I, I heard you say, well, uh, you know, I don't know. I was asking myself, I didn't hear you say, I am withdrawing. Uh, uh, Chief Justice, I, I think what I was saying uh, is that having sit, seated here yes. and looking at my experience, yes. I don't think it would be prudent to proceed to that one. So oh, I, I so you are withdrawing? I'm withdrawing from Okay, that one. okay. No, that's fine then. Um, uh, Judge President Komu, uh, you, you are, ex are you putting questions to her? No, no I just, um, just, just for, for myself, uh, yeah. uh, Chief Justice. Yeah. Can, can uh, I, I just wanted to find out if you, you're putting questions to her, in which event I'll just excuse her. No, not to be excused, uh, Chief oh, Justice. Okay. I, I, I'm just concerned that... Um, the, there may be um, possibly three good candidates. One does not know what's going to happen. If she falls out here, maybe she may be good here, and then what mm. if she what if she falls no, away again? No, no. Uh, uh, I don't. Uh, I, I, I'm. Uh, yeah, it's her choice. She has made a choice. If it is a risky choice. It's her choice. Okay. If Thank anything, you. she can just blame Commissioner Malema for it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Ms. you. Ms. Gudang Gondwana, you're excused. Thank you very much, ma'am, for making yourself available. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you to everyone for the opportunity.